Welcome to Flying Smoke. Today we are going to do Texas brisket. Uh, simplest way to make that is, well, it's a simple way to make it. <laughs> Texas brisket is typically salt, pepper, and garlic. We're going to use that and we're also going to add some nice little fun stuff. Uh, so stay tuned. It's going to be fun. All right, this is, come on over here. It's a USDA Prime. It's a 14.72, let's just round it and call it a 15 pound full packer brisket. What does that mean? Full packer brisket is, it's got the flat, which a lot of people see at stores. That's just literally flat. <laughs> and the point end, which is another muscle and don't quote me on it, but this is the point end. And there actually is a way you can look in and see why the grains run differently between the point and the flat. What we're gonna do is cook it as one big separate piece of meat. And this is, I have never cooked a USDA Prime before, but it's got a lot of marbling in it. We're gonna to have to get some of the fat off of it. And as always, we're gonna use time lapse so you don't have to see all the monotony. <laughs> Stay tuned. Trimmy's done. I've seen, uh, oh my God, so many of these done in competition, so many of these done on YouTube. Trim it the way you want to trim it. There are people that throw these, right, deco it all with the big kernel fat, right on the smoker, it's fine. Most of this fat's gonna, well, 90% of it's gonna render anyway and congeal when we get it up to the right temperature. But now, we gotta get some flavors down deep in the muscles. So, this is a combination of uh, Cosmo Q and Butcher Barbecue. Uh, Cosmo uses two cans of beef consomme, which is good. Don't use broth. This is stock. This is going to have bone in it. And it, I can't tell you how much that little kick matters. I want to use Butcher's Barbecue. This is their injection. It's, I'm going to use about half of it because I don't want to overdo it. Make sure that lid's on tight. Give it a good shake. Got the rubs sitting out, right? But I haven't put them on yet because I have an injective, which I'm doing now. It will have the tendency to wash your rubs off, so we don't want to do that. This is an old marinator, but we're going to have to use it. That's why I put it in the tray, because this is just going to go everywhere. You're going to get mess. But this 
it's going to get those flavors deep down the meat. And you know, even though it doesn't look like I'm putting a lot in, trust me, I put a half, I put a can of consomme in this thing already. This is the part where you make burn ends. The rest I will use when I'm cooking. Got Mars dog. And it'll actually go in this. This is going to shrink up a little bit when I cook, put it on. So this is going to rest for about an hour or so. And then this goes in the fridge. I don't want to put any rub on it yet. It's about 10 o'clock. I won't put any rub on it until about 11. Leave it on there for about an hour. And then I'm going to put it on the smoker. It's going to smoke overnight from midnight till about 6 or so in the morning. I'll get up and I will... Uh, wrap it because that'll be enough smoke six hours should be enough smoke this is going to be a texas style brisket we're going to use chupacabra brisket magic cash cow from big papa smokers and the base is going to be boars out white lightning so we're going to let this rest and the magic of video you're going to see it now all right it is now 11 o'clock and we are ready to apply rub now, this is going to go onto a drum smoker, which I will try and shoot as best I can. But normally, when I'm doing an indirect, it's going to be fat side up because I want to get a lot of smoke. And because it's indirect heat, I don't have to worry about it. But a drum smoker is direct heat, so I'm going to go fat side down. All right, now I'm going to score them. And I'm just going to. Just go, there's no particular way, right or wrong. Okay, now I've got scored. So here are my three rubs. Wars and I Out White Lightning, and then Chupacabra Brisket Magic, and Cash Cow from Big Papa Smokers. All right, so I'm just gonna give it a quick dab because I want it to be dry-ish. And we've already injected it, so some of that stuff's gonna come out. But I want the rub to stick as much as I can. All right, so let me wash this hand. Okay, so I'm going to keep this hand for putting on rub, this hand for handling the rub. So let's go with the base coat right now. This is white lightning. So you want to hold it up high, kind of high. There we go. Let's get a nice little even coat on. This is just a salt, pepper, and garlic rub. Now we're going to go with Cash Cow. This is from Big Papa Smokers. This has a lot of meat proteins and soy, and it's just <laughs> delectable to say the least. Now to Chupacabra Brisket Magic. Let's give it a nice even coat with the sides as much as you can. All right, so we're going to do this one-handed. All right, now this is where we're really going to get the flavor. So up high, we're going to get the back side of this real quick here. And then the cash cow. All right, now our main rub, brisket magic. You can see it's already starting to pull moisture out. Oh, now, we're going to have to put the GHB up. That would be the Greyhound Barrier. Okay, put these like this, like that. This is going to rest for about an hour. This is to keep my 32 inch to the neck. <laughs> Actually, the top of his head is 42 inches. Mars, my Greyhound, from getting in this. Now I'm going to go outside and I'm going to light the fire and get it going so that the smoker is ready to go. I'm gonna wash up here first. But the smoker will be ready to go. And if I'm getting a little groggy, I'm sorry, it's late. But this is an overnight cook, so it'll be ready for tomorrow's dinner. And it's all about timing. So, see you in a couple seconds, as far as you're concerned, on the smoker. My camera lady's asleep. My neighbors are asleep. I'm gonna check the pit temperature. 230 degrees, like a laser. Now, with a barrel smoker, you gotta do this next part fast, otherwise the heat's gonna get rubbed. I got blue smoke rolling, here we go.
right in the eyes. All right, I will bring you all around to show you this. Actually, my little DigiQ, and I have it set up going through the airflow vent. And the pit temperatures dropped to 190. It's already back up to almost 200. There's 200, and it's going to go to 230. So Uncle Pookie is working. Pit's coming back up to temperature. I've got enough coals in there to run it for 15 hours. But we're not going to run it for 15 hours. We're going to run it for about six. Uh, in the morning, whoops, I'm sure I needed that. <laughs> in the morning, uh, once I've got the color I want, which should take about six hours, I'm going to pull it and I'm going to put it in the oven because once I choke the fire off, well, I can use the coals again. So, but home, and six hours on a smoker, you can at competitions continue to cook it for 15, 16, 17 hours. But I got an oven inside and air conditioning. Good morning, this is 6.30, this is what you get. Um, Ooh, sorry about this. Um, it's now off the smoker. It's got all the smoke it's going to take. And now I'm just going to put it in the oven to finish it off. Because I'm at home. I'm not at a barbecue contest. And yes, I could run it on the after pit all afternoon. But <laughs> I've got an oven. And I can do it inside. And I get to save all the coals that I haven't used too. There's a relight. Anyway, so I've got the rest of the consomme that are from yesterday. I'm going to add a little water to it. All right, now I've switched it around. I cooked it. This is the fat side, fat side down, and I'm going to finish it in the uh, in the oven with uh, fat side up. Here's why: because basically nobody ever. I've watched a thousand videos. Nobody ever calls it this. But basically, what we're doing right now was we're braising. A small amount of liquid in a covered pan is braising. So we are going to braise this. What happens is the magic happens at around 195. The fat will start to congeal, gelatinize. I've heard many different terms. And break down. I've got my oven set at 220 degrees for a final temperature of 210. So it's going to take another four or five hours, I think. Well, I'm using the Thermalworks dot. You use whatever you want, but I choose to use good stuff. How about that? 184. It's only a couple degrees off. So I've got my final cooking temperature is 210 degrees, and the dot's up and running. And now we just wait. But I wanted to get it off the smoker because like I said, it's had all the smoke it's gonna take. And you saw from the dark color, it's sort of a brownish, like a dark brown. That's the Texas style. Uh, Texas is traditionally salt and pepper, sometimes a little bit of garlic. We've amped it up because we used two gringos, uh, chupacabra brisket magic, which is from Texas. So it's still a Texas style. But a Texas style, for those of you who don't know what that is, and you see that on the internet a lot of times, is a Texas style is, I hate to use this word, and that's probably why people don't use it. It's a roast beefy style brisket. Whereas here in Tennessee, Georgia, when they cook brisket, they tend to, you know, you cook with what you know, and they will make it like a barbecue style brisket, which is basically they make brisket the same way they make pork shoulder, which is, you know, a paprika and sugar-based barbecue rub. Uh, we're gonna go with the traditional Texas style. I actually prefer that because to me, barbecue beef is beef with barbecue sauce and that's one of my dad's favorite recipes. Um, anyway, so we're gonna let this cook. We'll get it to temperature and I'll have it on camera. I'm thinking, whew, I gotta go back to bed. 10 or 11 o'clock this morning and when it hits final temperature, you got to then let it rest for at least an hour or two. Uh, and I, before I pull it off the, uh, or before I pull it out of the pan and, you know, start to let it rest, or whatever, it's got to hit that internal temperature. And then I've got to 
poke it. And you can use a toothpick for this. I use a uh, Thermoworks Thermopan. For, I'm checking for temperature, but really I'm checking for feel. That's how you can tell a brisket's done it. It turns into jelly. I mean, there will be no resistance. You saw me poking it just a few minutes ago. It's like, oh, it doesn't want to go in there. When it's done, it'll just be like, it just falls through the meat. Yeah, so anyway, Magic of Video says you'll be back in a few seconds. Me, I got to go back to bed and wake up in a few hours, but uh, we'll come at you. All right, so it is now six o'clock and it's been cooling down. I put it on warm until Michelle got home from work. Uh, it was ready to eat at about three o'clock, but you put your oven on warm, it's fine. So let's see what we got. So this is what the brisket looks like after it comes out of the oven. All right. That's fat side up. Thank you, Michelle. Oh boy, that is no way gonna come out. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So, according to my Mr. Cosmo, you just follow the fat line down. You get it in there and the knife will just feel its way. So, let's try that. That's not cutting. Come on, baby. This stuff is just falling apart. Trying to cut the point off here. There it goes. There it goes. You just follow the line. It's just going down. How about that? There it is. All right. Now, we will not be making burn ends, but as you can see, <laughs> It's pretty juicy. So, the first thing you want to do is have Michelle put glasses on my head. They're going to be her awesome green glasses, but they're glasses nonetheless. Can I have them on there crooked? Thank you, dear. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is one of the most basic things that people, all the time, I watch people cut steaks, I watch them cut brisket, whatever, they cut this way. No, you cut across the grains. I urge you to go watch Alton Brown, and he can explain this more. This is going to be me. Uh, I love the fat content of it. So the flat, the grain is what we're looking for here. I've missed a little bit of this. All right, so there's the flat grain. I mean, yeah, juicy. What do you think? I mean, look at that. <laughs> so here's the flat grain. So again, we want to start here, and we're going to cut across the grain. And again, I will reiterate that I've seen a lot of people with these fancy schmancy dowel strong knives. And I mean, well, you can see my global knife sitting there. Normally I use Victorinox, but today we will use an Cuisinart. Because I want to get this done quickly because we're hungry. So here we go. They don't have to be perfect. So let's try to find one that's sort of pencil thin. I think I cut one right there. There it is. All right. So let's check it and see how we did. It's pulling apart, which means it's probably a little overcooked. Just a little bit. But as you can see, I got one heck of a smoke ring in there. That's the cherry wood you see. You should be able to pull out a perfect slice, and if I let it sit in a little while, it probably would tighten up a little bit. Here's another one in here. It should be able to pull out, yeah, it's a little bit overcooked, just a little bit. But you know, this isn't for competition, this is for eating. And now, I will chew one. I mean, that's a half inch smoke ring. Yeah, Texas style roast beef, and that's the flat part. We'll keep cutting the flat. I wanted to wait for Michelle to come home so she could enjoy this with me. And that's really what you're doing it for. Yeah, I like to win money too, but in the end, I like to keep mama happy. 
So you got the pretty colors. Move this over here. Okay. Now my favorite. Again, the point. Don't fall for the old grill marks. So we're looking for this way. So we're going to cut it crossways. So here we go. And actually, I'm going to cut this in half and then cut it the other way. All right. This is the burn end section right here. Money muscle. Everybody wants to. Oh, money muscle, money muscle. But this is my favorite part of the brisket right here. See how this one came out. This one came out a little better. There. There you go. It's holding together. And you can see the pull. Pull part. Boop. Now, Michelle, I'm going to have you try point. That's brisket point. And see which one you like better. Oh, oh man. A pure bark. All bark, no bite. Meaning, I have to share one. There's bark. I will wrap this up in a minute, uh, but we're going to eat. Uh, this has been a long process. I started this last night at around 11 o'clock. Cooked the coals. Well, I actually started earlier than that. We started trimming it at about 8 or 9. But I actually, the work work started around midnight. Got the smoker to do what it's supposed to do. There's about 175 degrees that came off this morning. I cooked to 230 degrees for about six hours putting smoke on. And as you can see, that smoke ring is no lie. You're not gonna get a big smoke ring on the top. Now this was, this was how it was sitting on the smoker, fat side down. So the meat is where the cherry smoke got into and that's why I use cherry smoke, because people like to see the little pink spots. I'll wrap it up for you in post, but we're going to eat. Talk to you later. Follow up. So today, well, for the last 16, so, yeah, yeah, 16 hours, we did a Texas brisket. I used uh, as rubs. I put them, in the, put them in the description, but I'm also going to say it again. Uh, the base rub was white lightning for salt, pepper, and garlic. And I used uh, Cash Cow from Big Papa Smokers. And I used Brisket Magic from Two Gringos. The point was perfect. The flat was just a little bit overcooked. But again, this is an eating brisket and it's not for a competition. This was to keep my bride, a Texas girl, happy. And it was phenomenal. It was about, well, if you include the charcoals, around 50 bucks for a prime 15 pound brisket after trimmed, cooked. We're gonna get you know, seven or eight meals out of it. So when you do the math, it's 348 a pound. It's a pretty good deal. So let me know what you think. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting on? Hit the subscribe button and you'll get notifications if you ring the bell. <laughs> Don't be saved by the bell. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up. I've actually got a pork shoulder, well, four pork shoulders I did, and that'll be coming out real soon. It's, it's already filmed. We had some rain, rain delays that happens, and uh, look for that very soon, as soon as I get it out there and get it edited. Uh, having some problems with uh, the microphone, and uh, well, rather than having a mic, I'm having to hold it. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know how your cooks go. If you have any questions, hit me up. Take care.